Hi, everybody. This is Matt Hawes of Comics Unlimited in Evansville, Indiana, and of The Happy Show, which you can watch uh, segments and episodes on YouTube, on this channel, and my other channel. Uh, but right now, what I want to do is, you see this? This official CGC Guide for Grading Comics. And uh, I just got this in the mail today. I was actually going to do an unboxing video. I started it and do, doing it, but the way my I'm, I, my uh, camera phone here works, uh, if I want to be in the shop for a little bit, I'd have to you know switch the way this thing films. And it makes it harder for me to film myself opening and going through these things. And so it was kind of a pain in the ass, basically, in getting. But the good thing for you guys is you don't have to look at me. So, uh, even though there's a little bit of disconnect here, because you're just seeing this image, and for right now, just hear me yak as I just film over it for a little bit. Uh, what happened is, uh, this this book, I have a connection to this book, and that's why I've gotten these copies of the book. Um, I did a, a, a photograph, I took a photograph from 1945 that was of a Read More book display. Read More was a bookstore here in Evansville for many decades. And the family, uh, somebody in the family still have possession of this photo from 1945. And it seemed to be centered around the comic book display. I don't know if that was intentional or that just happened to be the end that they took uh, the picture. But because there's, you see other magazines and periodicals in this fo old photograph. And a, a friend of mine who, ha who runs a comic book group on Facebook, just a small group of, of uh, local fans and collectors where we discuss, you know, the comic books and such. Um, he, he posted after he, when his friends posted it after, you know, the fa the family member from Reed Moore shared the photo with them. And, uh, so I thought this was kind of a neat photograph, this 1945 photograph. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool to see it in color, which I've done little things like this before where we, uh, where me and other fans on other message boards and, and, and websites and such will get together uh, and try to figure out what comic books are in a display in like a 1940s or 50s photogra uh, photograph and then try to find the those books online, the actual uh, full scan or photograph of the cover and that sort of thing. And then sometimes other people besides, besides me and I myself also have in the past uh, have fun like basically taking the uh, the color version and, 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 and transposing it into the black and white photo in a sense, to make it look like it was actually a color version of that photo. So I did that with this 1945 photo, which was a bit of work, because you have to actually do a lot of uh, editing and Photoshop with twisting, distorting the image and everything, and resizing just to get it to fit right, especially if the whole goal is to, like, so basically transpose it onto the photo, so it, it actually, you layer it above the, uh, the, with the actual photograph of the comic book, say it's a Superman issue. It's, you, you identify that Superman issue, you find a color version online, and then you take that cover and you, you kind of twist the image and everything, like I said, and put it down so that it fits atop the other one. So, so to the casual viewer, once you're all done with that and you, and you put the image all together, flatten the image, so to speak, it will appear to be like a color photograph of that display. And, and, uh, unless you really look closely, I mean, never realize that it's not the actual books that's in that photo, the original photo, because those, like I said, were black and white. There's programs that will colorize, uh, old black and white, uh, photos and such, but they're not really going to get the true colors as a rule because it's just, uh, algorithm in the program, I guess, that tries to decipher what colors are what. Uh, it's pretty good with, with skin, humans and skin tones, you know, but uh, as far as color of clothing and other materials, it just depends. And certainly when you got a comic book that's full of a whole bunch of, uh, you know, colorful covers that uh, uh, bright, you know, different colors, you know, it, it, it it's not going to get the right color mix usually. That's why I went through the, through the effort I did, mostly just for fun. And so what I did is I posted on the CGC boards, uh, as well as on the other boards on the internet, uh, the message boards, because what I was doing was I was trying to get, uh, help on finding and identifying some of the comic books and the photos and seeing other people would help locate them. And a lot of people did. Thankfully, thankfully there were a lot of good people. I, I appreciate their help who helped me find some of the covers and identify some of them so that, uh, I could put them into this image. And so that's what I did, and, uh, and I posted uh, 
my work in progress on the CGC boards. Now, this thing, you'll see once I show you the photo, which is in this book. Uh, whenever I went to, to try and uh, get this this uh, book, um, I mean, this the photo colorized, uh, I knew it was going to be a huge task and probably would never be able to be fully completed because I was even going after the periodicals in the, in the photograph that weren't, strictly speaking, comic books just because I wanted to try and make as much of a color photo as I could. But at some point, even with help, it gets really difficult to identify certain books because they're behind other books, like overlapped and everything. And so it really becomes an issue. And it's hard to really identify some of those books. And some just... You know, it's hard to find. Even if you can identify it, you may not be able to find a color image online. So ultimately what I did is I had my black and white original version, which was that was actually the read more version. And then we had the, the work in progress, which I got probably, I would guess, maybe 70% 70 of of the photos or of the comic books and magazines identified. And so my, uh, my version of the photo, my color version, has those. And then for fun, just to see what it looked like complete, because I realized at some point, I was maybe a standstill and didn't know if I'd get much, much more identified. I went ahead and colorized the, um, the background and with a true, you know, truly colorized, like with these programs, like I talked about, not, not what, what I did with my work wasn't really colorizing. It was, it, I wasn't, uh, coloring the photo or anything like that. I was just transposing color versions of the scan, comics, uh, you know, the scans and, and other photos into the photo. I don't know if any of that makes sense to the average person, but you know, anyway, uh, so, so my hybrid version, which is my, the, the 70% or whatever that I did, plus the rest of the remainder, I just colorized are what's it, uh, printed in this book as if I'm, if I'm correct, because the truth is I've just, uh, just now looking at the inside, except for I looked at the first couple pages before I'd start filming the second video. The first video I scrapped, like I said, because it just wasn't coming out right. Uh, that's uh, autographed by Matt Nielsen, who is the man who put this together. He is um, this the president of CGC. He's the one who contacted me. He asked me if he could use the photograph. And when he, he went to use the color version that I did, uh, because I need to explain the, the original black and white version would still be owned by the family from read more. And, uh, mine was based off that, but mine becomes a transformative work the way I did it so that, you know, they, they don't own my version. I don't own their version. So CGC approached uh, me. And then, uh, when I told them about the read more family, uh, the one family member, you know, being the one that shared the photo, they got in contact with him and he graciously and, thankfully agreed to go ahead and let them use the, the photo too. So they, they got, they covered their basis by, you know, talking to him and me, but, uh, my, uh, right here is, is my, uh, credit in the book for the new stand photograph. And then Kevin Logie right here, new stand photograph that Kevin Logie is, uh, the family member for that used that their family used to own, uh, read more. Back in the 1945, he's the one who shared the photograph. So we're both credited in there uh, for its usage in this book. So that's nice. And uh, now beyond this page, I haven't seen the rest of this. So let's go ahead and take a look. We can kind of use this as a look also to uh, look at CGC's new grading guide. See, as far as I know, I don't recall CGC ever having a grading guide. They've hardly ever made their grades public. So this is actually the first time these things are, um, they've, they've actually put out a book about grading and how they go about it. So this is interesting. This is the hardcover version. I think there's soft cover versions. And he sent me uh, a signed copy, as you saw. I thought that was nice. And uh, so this is kind of cool. You know, it goes through the history of comics, which is something I would have expected them to do, you know. Um, uh, I like that. That's one of my, uh, one pictures I like of Stanley. I've done a Stanley documentary recently, so I've went through a lot of Stanley photographs. Uh, and of course, as you might imagine, especially in later years, as he got more and more known by the mainstream because of the movies and such, there's tons of photos, but this is actually one of my favorites. So it's kind of cool that they chose that one. Um, yeah, just give me an overview of the history here. Talking about my eye. Uh -huh. Guess we'll hear about uh, yeah, the Edgar Church collection. 
And let's see. Talk about the movies and stuff. So it's a nice package, a nice, uh, nice book. You know how they put it together and everything. It looks nice. You know, I've said before in previous videos, I'm not the biggest fan of the idea of, of slabbing comics, but you know, it is what it is. Um, interior cover. So these are explaining panel, staple, page. So far, they're they're just explaining the construction of a comic, I guess, before they get to the stuff like grades and all that. I wonder how big that photograph is. <laughs> that we'll see here. We haven't come across it yet. Um, three sources of defects. Okay, now here we're getting to the kinds of defects in books. So this is interesting to look at. And, you know, I've been in the comic books almost my whole life. As long as I can remember, I've been in the comic books. And... Um, you know, I, I grew up, you know, in the, in the 1970s. I was born uh, technically in the 60s, but I uh, was, I'm old. But uh, in the 70s, I, I was one of the area, you know, when I started to, you know, I was of reading age and all that. So comic books have always been around to me. And I couldn't tell you when I first read a comic book, but I can tell you some of the first ones I started to buy with my own money and hold on to. Uh, and I bring some of this up too, because I've been a, you know, a, a comic book fan and a reader since 40 plus years, <laughs> almost 50 years, almost, uh, um, but definitely over 40 years. And, um, I became a dealer technically in the early nineties. I don't think I really sold much except for maybe the friends before that. And I wouldn't consider myself a dealer at that point, but in the early nineties, I started becoming a dealer because I wanted to, you know, um, just do something in, in, in the, in the business I love and all that. Uh, I wanted to be an artist. I am an artist, but I want to be a professional artist uh, working for the companies. And so my two goals in life was to be an artist and have a shop. I never got around to getting a shop. Oh no! Wait a Let me rephrase that. I get. I got, you can tell I'm just rambling while I'm talking. Um, I got around to the shop. <laughs> I never got around to getting a, a, a regular job as a comic book artist. Is what I meant to say. The shop I did get. I had the shop for over 18 years. Um, brick and mortar shop before I decided just to sell mostly online at shows and conventions. Um, so that's how I make my living to this day. Um, Anyway, my point, my whole point about bringing all this up, besides just rambling as I go through the book, is that I, uh, I've known, of course, about grading and such, but there's still descriptions that, you know, more universal descriptions that this book might help me specify on uh, uh, what, what a certain defect is called. Because even, even all these years, there's certain defects. It's like, how do I describe this whenever I'm posting something on, on eBay or what have you? Um, so, so that might be helpful for me in that regard, because you can always learn something new, no matter how much you already know. Um, of course we look, we get the thing about their, their grading, how to grade a comic book. Now, see, I've always been confident, at least since I got to the age that I understood about comic book grading and learned about it. I've been pretty confident in my grading. And I would say that typically I'm usually stricter than what I've seen from, uh, CGC here. Of course, they get really strict once it comes to crossing over to that 9.8 to 9.9 .9 and, and all that sort of thing, which they should be, I suppose. But um, but here we finally get them to tell us how they determine certain grades, which, like I said, I don't think they've ever actually made a public, uh, you know, like a book or anything else made, made this information public. So this perhaps the first time that they've done that. Marvel value stamps. Um, so this video don't take forever. I'm just glancing quicker here, but you, you get an idea until I see that photo that I know that I, um, you know, had, had done here. But yeah, this, this looks like it's going to be a cool book to look at. Uh, that, that damn book. Oh, and these here, I wonder what they'll say inside uh, this book once I read it. I'm not going to take time to read it right now. But 
these digital codes, that little label that you peel off, I think those are the modern day equivalent of the Marvel value stamps. Even though when you remove that, that sticker, it doesn't affect the value or it doesn't mar the book in the same way it did to clip out those stamps. There's still, I figure, going to be people who say, well, if it doesn't have that in there, they're, they're going to expect it to be a lower grade if it doesn't have that label on there. Uh, I haven't heard much said about that. That's my own, uh, my own theory about it, which I'm sure that other people have thought about that, but look at that. That's kind of cool. Oh, I thought those foreign editions. Ignore the heater there turning on. Boy, I'm just kind of surprised I haven't ran across that photo yet. I would have thought that they would have used that in the front of the book because it was a 1945 photo. I thought they would just use that as a example of a newsstand in the 45. <laughs> so... Hopefully my video won't take forever because trying to find this photograph, not, not that I didn't want to show you the rest of the book. I figure most of you out there probably would have been curious anyway if you're a comic book fan. But I'm just, I just think it is kind of interesting that I haven't came across it yet. It's like, wow, they really buried it in this book, didn't they? <laughs> Let's see here. Like I said, a lot of cool photos. It's going to be interesting to see just how they uh, talk about the damage and, the, and stuff that you can find on a comic book and how to grade that. And you get to see a lot of neat covers too. Yeah, look how that. That's real. Um, just stop for a moment and say, you know, when I see rest, when they talk about restoration, and you see a book that had like been brittle and missed and had all these pieces missing. And then they, then you see another version and all of a sudden it's, it's all patched together again. I call those Frankenstein books because it's like, they obviously they couldn't have done that using the, um, the, you know, the original material. Like if you have action number one, you're not destroying another action number one, the piece out together. So that's not even made up of, uh, the, you know, the, the original book. It's gotta be made up with, I guess photocopy or something, some kind of copy of the of the missing parts of the cover. Anyway, that just made me think about that. Marvel chipping, yay! Marvel tear, tear, tear. Marvel tears. I know it's supposed to be tears, but yeah, tears. You get tears when you see the tears. Another thing about the value stamps there, or not value stamps, the uh, digital codes. Stickers. Foxing. Ew, mold mildew foxing. Yuck. <laughs> I say that because that's one of the worst damages because it's mold and you know will continue to grow and stuff. So that's not that's not something I would like to see on a book. The, the damages. These other damages are bad enough. <laughs> Where did they bury this photo? <laughs> I'm trying not to run out of uh, camera time here either. Like I said, at least I hope you're enjoying getting a quick look at some of these pages, um, if nothing else. I hope I didn't skip the page there. There we go. I think I did. I hope I didn't skip one with the actual picture on it. I just wonder where they would have placed it because it just seems kind of uh, kind of odd that it wasn't like set up front and when they were talking about the talking about the history of the books and stuff. That's what I, I would have thought that'd been the most logical place unless I overlooked it somehow and it was in that area. I don't want to have to edit this video, so it's gonna suck if I have to go back. Ooh, boy, graphs and everything. Now we're talking about cleaning, about color retouch, leaf casting. Glue. Married books. That's when you take two uh, different copies of the same issue and put them together to make one complete book. When one's missing, when they both are missing something out of, out of the book. Index of grades. Wolverine. Schnickety schnick. 
Oh, okay, now we're going to the grades. And each, oh, we're going down the line. There's a gazillion Wolverine covers as we go down the line here. Well, I hope you don't mind, but I know that when we're going through this, we're not going to see the... We're not going to see that bookshelf yet all the way down to the core. So I'm, you can, it's easy to skip when you're just going to see... You're just going to see poor Wolverine get more and more rough looking. So no point in going through it slowly. Ah, ah, a remainder copy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Where is that photograph, dude? <laughs> Okay. I must have passed it. How did I pass this? Let's switch hands here. Well, you gotta look at the book. <laughs> okay. Somehow, maybe I overlooked it. And uh, sorry to go back a little bit here, but... It's got to be in this beginning here. Ah, darn it. It's right there. It was right up front on the early page. Yeah, there it is. See? What a dope I am. <laughs> okay. Uh, yep. Yeah, there's my uh, color eyes. Let me... <laughs> Sorry, I, I was looking closer at it myself. But anyway, that's the newsstand. And uh, a good chunk of this over here, I reconstructed, like I said, which I guess that's the word you can use, to reconstruct it, the images. And, uh, you know, like, put, the, put the, so they look at all color and all that. Some of the stuff, like, in the further in the back here was actually colorized because I couldn't ID it or locate the scans of the, you know, photos of the covers. Well, okay, thankfully we were able to find that real quick, so I had to go to another look, and you, you basically got, got to see the most all this hardcover version of the CGC Grading Comics Guide. And uh, sorry if it just seemed rambling, but I hope you enjoyed at least checking it out with me. And uh, anyway, that's it for this video. Yay!